Hey, what's going on guys? This is Reckles with Want to Buy Gold, and today I wanted to answer one of your comments, one of your questions, uh, asking what UI add-ons I'm using. Now, I talked about gold making add-ons in 20 Days of Gold Making a while back, uh, so I have a video up on that, but I never covered UI stuff, so I wanted to, to go through that. And actually, uh, the day before, a couple of you asked to... Um, and actually, there really hasn't been a day since the channel came out where someone hasn't left a car. Ah! Okay, so I've been wanting to do this video for a while as a, a point of reference for y'all, a, a list of what I use, but I also want it to be a guide for new players or anyone who hasn't set up a solid interface before. So we're gonna have a list of all the add-ons I use, you know, I, all the everything I could ask about all the time. Then we're gonna go into how I mentally approach this with customization, minimalism, consistency, and then how I actually apply those, how, how you can, and then how to tie it all together. So, side note, uh, this is gonna be just UI. If you're looking for gold making add-ons, I talked about those in the 20 days of gold making video. Uh, so I'll link that here in the description. All right, so first, here is a list of all the add-ons I get asked about on a daily basis in the YouTube comments. The Diablo Orbs are an add-on called Mistra's Diablo Orbs. My sexy map in the corner is an add-on called Sexy Map. Uh, you can clean up your bars a little with the add-on bartender. Uh, to make your bars a little prettier, you can put a mask over them with the add-on mask. Uh, to make mask prettier, I use Mask Renatra. Uh, I don't actually, there's no joke or like tie in there. It's actually just, there are a ton of skins for mask. Uh, this is just the only one that has little circular buttons I like. When I said I use Bartender, I lied. I actually use Domino's now. It's it's just a little bit more customizable, better UI. Uh, for my unit frames, the, the health bar, target, target of target, I use Pitbull. If you ever see a video of mine that has a full body portrait next to my health bars, uh, that's found in Pitbull there. To make all my bags pretty, I use Bagnon. If you ever see a red border on a looted transmog item, it's it's just a Bagnon option that means that item is unwearable. It doesn't designate anything as transmog specifically. I use a lot of weak auras, and these are generally on a per character basis to track different cooldowns. Uh, I use Trade Skill Master, which was originally just an auction house interface, but now it's kind of become a full UI replacement for anything that has to do with gold making. You know, auctioning, mailing, crafting, disenchanting and looting. It's, it's honestly replaced about 10 different add-ons that you may still be using. Postal, Panda, Auctioneer or Auctionator, Aki's recipe list, uh, TUJ, like a lot of add-ons are obsolete now. For raid frames, I use Voodoo. It's like a uh, grid had a baby with heel bot and then that baby not only took steroids but went on to win Miss America. Uh, it's, I know, it's a complicated comparison. Shut up, it's fine. Voodoo is amazing, but it's pretty massive so I won't be able to get into uh, everything of how to set it up in this video if you want this video to be less than an hour long. Also, uh, when I said I use Pitbull, I lied. I've shifted my unit frames over to BD add-ons. These are created by the Top 10 Progression Guild, Big Dumb Gaming. Uh, they're about as clean as you can get, yeah, yeah, BD maybe means something other than Big Dumb. But they're about as clean as you can get without sacrificing functionality. Uh, this is also what makes my game menu super awesome looking, gives that little character thing. So, now that we've got the list done for all you impatient viewers, I need to talk about mindset. If you're setting up, a, actually no, uh, I need to give a little preface. Normally, I try to be unbiased and disassociated in my statements. You you have to with informational guides, how-tos. But we're getting into artistic territory here, so if I ever say in the next couple of minutes, you know, you have to do X, Y, Z, you don't. But I'm talking from an artistic mindset, so 
I have to make bold claims from from an emotional perspective. It's just how my brain works. Take a grain of salt, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Okay, so first and foremost, I... Wait, can I say that this far into a video? Um, I don't use LVI or any stock add-on interface setup. Uh, each character has a different uh, a play style, a different approach you need to take with it. Tanks, they care about aggro and interrupts and defensive cooldowns, things like that. Fury Warriors need uh, to first care about tracking their rage so that they can just dump it all at the perfect time. Feral Druids and Affliction Locks, they, they care about energy almost as much as Warriors do, but their main focus is on tracking dots. With, with a Fire Mage, though, you don't care about any of that. You care about procs. You know, oh look, Pyroblast proc, then cast Pyroblast, GG. A Resto Druid, on the other hand, wants to see everyone's health, who has a heal over time effect on them, and when those effects are about to expire. You know, with Voodoo, you can set all that up in the raid frames. So, with each character's UI, you want to be accentuating the play style that you care about with that specific class, um, and this is why, uh, with my Fury Warrior, I use Mistra's Diablo Orbs. It's not because it's pretty, it's just, it's a big honking rage bar that I can see peripherally, even if I'm completely tunnel visioned. Now, consistency is also important. My my rage and health bars are circular with with the Meester's Diablo orbs. I, I whirlwind, I blade storm, sweeping strikes, you know, everything with a Fury Warrior is is circular and flowing. So my sexy map is a circle. And I use a circular mask with uh, Renetra uh, on my action bars. But you know what? We're getting a little too deep into my, my warrior specifics, so let's back things up. All right, so there's a lot you can do with your UI. And because of that, you have to keep things as clean as possible to enhance the gaming experience and make it easier rather than muddling everything up. Here's a neat little experiment you can do, and, and I recommend you do this on every character you play. Hit Alt-Z to take away your UI, and just fly around. Do a, do a zone full of world quests. You'll notice that everything feels prettier and more engaging. It's a better gaming experience. But if you do this for five minutes, you'll notice that occasionally you forget your keybinds for specific abilities. Uh, you you keep glancing at your map and, and you don't have that information available. You don't know where to go. So write down on a notepad what you're missing with this zero UI gameplay. You know, what what you think, what you keep looking at and not getting information on. For me, I need a map basic ability bars that I'd use while questing, buffs and debuffs because some dailies or heroic dungeons require that, nameplates uh, for aggro or faction tapping in or, uh, information, and, and unit frames so I can time out when things are gonna die and I, so I don't pull extra mobs during world quests. But that's it. Uh, to get rid of everything else, go into Domino's or Bartender and set the faded opacity of the other bars, your your action bars, menu bar, and and your bags to zero. Keep the normal opacity at 100%. If you ever occasionally need something from those, you can hover over your bags to make that bar pop up and click on a specific thing. You can hover over your artifact bar to see where you're at there, or you can hover over your action bar to click on the Flight Master's whistle. So, next, think about what abilities you don't really need to see. Uh, on my Demon Hunter or my Warrior, I use the scroll wheel for my leap and my charge, you know, my, my engages. It's got, both of those have a super short cooldown, so it's pretty much always up. I don't care about cooldown. I just put that on an invisible bar and forget about it. It clears up the clutter. Uh, my Demon Hunter, also has uh, sigils, uh, they're, they're six second AOE, silence, fear, vortex, or dots. For this, I use Opie, O-P-I-E, and I just press G or whatever button I set to it, and uh, that makes the options pop up, and then I just move my mouse to uh, whichever corresponding button I need. Uh, you, you learn that pretty quickly, it becomes second nature. But after playing with that for a while in Mythic Plus, I saw that 
I needed the cooldown information visible if they were on cooldown because I was I was wasting GCDs by trying to cast them when I couldn't. Uh, so I made a weak aura that appears off to the side for when I can't use them, when they're on cooldown. Now, this is a Demon Hunter specific example, sure, but you can apply this for any class ability that you use multiple times in a dungeon. You know, those 20 to 60 second cooldown abilities that you use all the time. Also on this, my Sigil of Flame is really important since that's an AoE dot that provides a ton of damage and healing, especially on big pulls. It's one of those abilities that I pretty much want to use on cooldown, so the fact that it is usable is more important. So for that, I have an auditory flame sound that comes up whenever uh, it comes off cooldown. And as a warning, kind of, I used to have weak ores up for my big defensive cooldowns, and you'll see this on a lot of a lot of raiders. They'll They'll have bars or artistic things that that decrease whenever the cooldown's being used up. But after playing with that for a while, I saw that for me, I was getting more information by just looking at the cooldown numbers on my bars rather than looking at the art or the icons. So for those, they were just cluttering things up, so I removed them. But I did keep the thing there's a big X that appears whenever I don't have any mitigation up and I'm in combat and I'm in a group. Then I want to know, like, yes, friggin' press something or you're gonna die. <laughs> in short, keep it clean, minimal, and only include the information you need and only include one copy of that information. Now, as a tank, when I'm progressing, I also need access to the skull or the sheep markers along with uh, potions or health stones or things like that, you know, survivability stuff. So for that, I set up a few of my bars to only appear when I'm in a group and a few others to only appear when I'm both in a group and in combat. So for that, I use Exorcist Raid Tools, uh, you know, the sheep and the skull which is amazing. It's a pretty it's a pretty big add-on, but I absolutely recommend it. Almost say it's required for uh, progression raiders. It's just amazing. Now, my action bar add-on Dominoes lets you set up custom LUA code to achieve similar effects. That's one of the things that separates it from Bartender. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with this custom code, but I'm kind of a noob when it comes to it. So I'll, I'll leave that to the experts and, and your Googling proficiencies. Now, earlier we talked about consistency before moving into minimization. Uh, if you have a fairly minimal UI, but it still just feels busy, like, like something is off, but you just can't put your finger on it, check to make sure you're using the same font and bar style on everything. And color scheme, too. Uh, if you're using the bar style aluminum and a, a 12 point Times New Roman font on your Voodoo Raid frames, if you have a flat non-gradient panel and a, a 10 point sans serif font on your Scott or your recount, it's gonna make you feel a little uncomfortable. I mean, it sounds silly, but yeah. You need to learn a little bit about typography to play WoW well. So here's my challenge to you and a few example UIs to give you some inspiration. Take these concepts and you know maybe a few of the add-ons that you haven't tested yet but I mentioned here and explore with them. Set something up, be creative. Send me a picture of a UI you put together uh, and are proud of. Send it to me either here in the comments or on my Twitter account and in either one, include the hashtag want to buy gold UI so I can find them. Next week, I'll put out a video highlighting all your best responses. So, thanks for watching. If this helped you, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and you'll see whenever I post future content. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. By the way, I'm prepping something kind of big for the channel. I'm really excited about it. It's a really cool, almost almost expansion. So stay tuned. I may not be posting videos quite as often as I normally do, but it'll be worth it in the end. All right. Bye guys. See you.